We're in the workshop and this is another investigation and try to repair video and today we're looking at this 12, 24 and boost battery charger. It's by, I can remind myself, Asa Clark so I wouldn't say it's uh, brilliant but it'll probably do the job. We'll just see what the symptoms are first, see how it works and take it from there. So it's late November and I've got the the stove going. It's warming up nicely. Half an hour and they, that makes this workshop area quite toasty which is brilliant. So let's have a look at this starter charger and the first thing that looks suspect is that link across there. That's a fuse. I don't think that's a fuse at all. So it's obviously been used for trying to start vehicles or something like that. And it's on the 12 volt and that looks like it's got quite warm as well. So I've had the top off, or the back off, and I'll just show you the various bits. So there are screws on the side, either side, undo those. And then on the top, there is these little plug things that go in there, like that. And underneath those, there's a screw, top and bottom. So they're hidden. So having done that, the top comes off. Right, let's have a look. So I've checked the obvious and that the fuse in the 13 amp plug is okay. So I've got the multimeter set on DC and first of all I want to see what the state of charge of this battery is. 12.2 that means it will provide a decent load on this battery charger. So the next thing to do is negative and positive. Now a word about these. I can't remember whether I said it on the last vid uh, battery charger repair video. But you've got to be careful about these areas here. And you see these are rusty. It means there'll be no contact. So I got hold of a big Smith's battery charger donkeys years ago from a scrapyard. Um, they gave it me. They said oh that's scrap it doesn't work. So I took it home thinking well at least I can get the diodes out of it and uh, all I did was clean those up and away it went and it was a really nice I think I've still got it somewhere 6 and 12 volt heavy duty battery charger so you've got to be careful of those areas so I'm going to clean those up now Nice shiny contact. And when I'm done with this, I would put some grease or some Vaseline on there so it doesn't rust again. Just make sure we've got good contact. Let's switch the meter off. Right, so we provided a load on this battery charger. Now let's see what it does switcher on a little bit of something but hardly anything and stick it on boost and yeah it's sort of working but not very well I'm just keeping these fingers out of the internals of that I'd say on boost it's giving 5 amps on a 
good load on a battery that's uh, low voltage relatively. I'll just check the battery volts negative positive 16 volts that's a bit weird so you know the battery should pull the voltage down let's take it off a boost Fourteen point nine. Well, considering the battery showed twelve point two, and we're charging at about three amps, then that sort of voltage is a bit wrong. Maybe some AC is getting through. Let's have a look inside the charger itself. So the mains comes in here, live and neutral comes up to this switch and then through various switches it puts in various coils in the primary so I don't think we need to mess with that the secondary what we have is an AC out to the rectifier and then another one to the rectifier fair enough then we have a neutral going to the neutral so we have a common neutral for all the outputs then we have a positive coming out of the rectifier which goes to the 24 volt and then a 12 volt I'm assuming this is a 12 volt it's a center tap on the 24 volt secondary coil output coil and that comes from the centre of there, that coil, down and to the 12 volts. So the 12 volts, again, exactly identical to the last battery charger that I was looking at, is half wave rectified. As in, we have one side which is AC and the other side which is rectified DC. That's the way they do it. So the thing to do now is because we've got a high voltage coming out and low current we need to have a look at the rectifier and to be able to test the rectifier we need to remove these two AC inputs and disconnect any DC from batteries and stuff so there's no circuit on that side. So I'll just do that. So now there are no connections to the rectifier at all so we can test the, uh, the diodes in the rectifier now looking at the diodes I'm just going to move the camera a little bit there's one of the diodes and I've looked at them all and there's nothing burnt so we're going to have to use the multimeter set on continuity to see what happens. So first of all we'll go from that AC input to that DC output. Yep. And now we need to turn the, the leads round. Nothing. So that, just check again side looks alright and then we go from here to there and there should be nothing and turn it round and there should be something interesting there's nothing there ah right well let's try the rest but that suggests that it's from here to there and there's only one diode that goes from here to there and it's that one there see there on there nothing okay let's try the other side go from there to there yep 
the other way around nope to the negative should get something and then the other way around nothing so that diode there is duff so the meter is set on continuity and let's try these we want we want a diode that passes negative through there effectively that's just a way of talking about it all right no turn it the other way round yes so that one is of no use try this this way round nope turn it the other way let's try with the negative yes so that one might be some use let's try the other ones we want to be putting negative in there that's it that, that one let's just turn it round to make sure that yes it's not just a dead short that one won't do anything turn it round yeah so those two would be for on the positive side those two on the negative side So that's the duff diode, so let's just clip that wire and I'll solder to that first of all. Right, that looks like the diode's in place. So that's the diode fitted and that tail cut off so now before we do anything else we need to fit this AC back to the rectifier so we'll just connect that up with spanners. Now it's interesting, there's a guy called, I think it's Keith Appleton, who's into model steam engines and he goes on about he likes to use these Barco adjustable spanners and I've got one of those and they are brilliant but I still prefer open-ended spanners but uh, it means you've got to go to your toolbox and get them out the toolbox. So that's the rectifier all connected and we're connected to the battery now so let's just plug it in switch her on oh well we got something it's similar but it's making more of a load type noise I think the thing to do is just see what the battery volts say because last time we had some quite high voltages 14.8 and that's on max stick it on boost 15.7 so that's sort of better. So I've cleaned up this contact here and these contacts there and just gone round and tightened things up and generally taken this apart, brushed it off, see what happens. Now we're on boost and we're on maximum. So let's just see what happens. All oh right, we're up to about 11 amps. So just a bit of cleaning. Uh, nine point nine, quite nine, and going down. 
So a bit of cleaning has also reduced any resistance. Much the same as with these crocodile clips. You know, you're not, you need a good clean contact to make sure that the current's flowing. We're only talking here about 14 volts, so a bit of muck will act as a considerable resistance. It's a matter of going through it, but basically we had a diode gone and then a lot of mucky contacts. But now it seems to work and it would, uh, no doubt, if you wanted to use it as a boost charger, um, when the starter motor pulls the battery down to 9 volts, the current would go up dramatically. In fact, we can try that with a drop tester. I'll just go and get it. Take two. So here's the drop tester that we've used before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the battery volts down with this. And this should be drawing about 150 amps. So we'll just give it a... There we go. Now then. Let's um, switch it on. And on the minimum it's charging at 10 amps. On the max it's charging at 15. And let's go minimum and boost. There we go, it's going right round to start. So the battery's got to provide sufficient load for this to do what it's supposed to do. I think we've finally got to the bottom of it. A diode gone, very mucky contacts here and down here and on the crocodile clips. So hopefully by pulling that voltage down on this battery we prove that this now works as it's supposed to. And of course it's charging now so therefore the volts will be going up in the battery and produce it and providing less of a load. So when we go on to boost now it probably won't go half as far. There we go.